So Ryan, welcome to the channel. I really appreciate you taking your time out, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on here. Oh, it's absolutely. I really appreciate your time. So you are the full throttle hog. So why don't you give, uh, let's give everybody the elevator pitch. Where do they find you, your social media? Yeah, for sure. So uh, full throttle hog on, on YouTube. Uh, we're also on Instagram and, and just recently on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, it's a traveling moto vlogging channel uh, that we dabble in cinematic sequences and and films just to to give the audience just a you know kind of a different look something that i enjoy doing in the filmmaking world and i just bring that to the channels so if they're into any of that kind of stuff they can go and follow along awesome so i mean i looked at the, the well i've looked at your videos but the trailer that you came out with for your channel and doing sort of the is it cinelogs or cinevlogs that you've kind of cinevlogs kinda yeah. i like that and, and yeah. it's clear now you had a channel before this, correct? So you, uh, you've, yep. you, you've been in the world. So what made you convert to motorcycles? Was there a moment where you just wanted to do something different? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, so I started video editing in 2000, uh, and this is before obviously YouTube mm -hmm. and before, you know, the type of technology we have today. I mean, Adobe Premiere Pro was on floppy disk. If you remember that you had to buy, and it was seven discs. Uh, it cost you, it was like $1,200 on sale. Um, ironically, I didn't buy the program until I read something that was called the Adobe Premiere Pro Bible. And it was about that thick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, back so, in the day books, yeah. Yeah, so I would, uh, I, I had no idea what I was looking at. And I started reading this book and, and I'm just hoping that maybe I'd retain 2% of it and then buy the program and dive in. Ironically, the, the, the reason I got into it is because all of my buddies and all of my friends told me I couldn't. And if you know, when somebody says you won't, you know, you're going to be like, my okay, beer. We yeah, got absolutely. This. So, uh, and ironically, uh, my wife, we met on motorcycles 20 years ago, next month, she would be sitting in my apartment as I was learning this new program and just all my frustrations that went along with it. And then I kind of shelved it for a little bit. And I, I kick myself all the time for, for kind of, cause you know, like if it's a perishable skill, if you're not mm -hmm. always doing it, it just kind of goes away. Uh, so I, I started getting back into it for, for friends and, and, and weddings and, and different things like that. And then I started doing some off-roading stuff and I was like, you know what, I can make some kind of action packed, you know, cinematic type of things. Cause that's just my style, the, the, the type of film I like to make. Uh, I didn't know exactly where it was going to go. So the channel was doing well. Um, I started making, you know, a little bit of money here and there. I was making, you know, I make more money on the, you know, side jobs and the commercials, uh, social media stuff. But really, my passion was just kind of creating those projects that I enjoy. So, uh, you know, kind of getting more on the personal side of things on on how this all came about. So my, I got rid of all my motorcycles. I had four. And I got rid of all of them when, uh, when my oldest daughter was born and that, uh, you know, it was one of those things that it, it, I had to make that decision, right. Mm -hmm. And at the time it was the right decision, but it also left a, uh, a hole in my heart somewhere along the way that I would come up every couple of years, I would go through like a 90 day stretch of, I need to go buy another motorcycle. I need to get back on two wheels. Uh, and then I kept pushing it off like we all do, right? Let's, uh, let's, you know, we'll do it next year. Now's not the time. Uh, and my mother who is, uh, you know, my biggest fan would absolutely just love for me to show her some of the off-roading videos, all the adventures I would take with, with my truck. And she would have me go over to her house and we would just sit there and watch videos and she would just put it on repeat over and over oh, again. That's awesome. Um, and you know, she traveled the world. I had, to, I had to, you know, I was very blessed to be able to travel. She was in the travel industry. Uh, and so it had, it gave me the opportunity to do a lot of traveling when I was younger. So my mother was getting ready to go for a Europe trip in 2019 in April, 2019, she was getting ready to go to Europe. Um, feeling kind of sluggish, kind of tired. She thought that she's coming down with something. She goes in the doctor's office and they diagnose her with cancer. Oh. Um, and it was a, 
you know, we didn't know it at the time. It was just like, Hey, you, you have cancer and, and it was uh, pretty, you know, aggressive, but they started putting her on treatment. So, um, she comes out of the hospital, you know, obviously we were all in shock. She goes back into the hospital in July. Now she's healthy as a clam and she goes back into the hospital in July, uh, and she passes in September. It was that fast, that quick. And, you know, honestly getting, going through that grieving process, I, I really, uh, you know, kind of had a, a heart to heart with myself saying, look, we, we, life's not a guarantee. Life's a gift. And we, anything can happen to any of us at any time. So if you keep putting off what you want to do today, tomorrow, there might not be one. Right. So I made the decision right then and there that I was going to buy a motorcycle, get back on two wheels. And honestly, this, the day that I bought it, I even think I have, I think I even filmed, if I go through all my stuff, I think I filmed everything from the day that I bought the bike. Um, and I knew that I was going to take kind of leave that off-roading world and then create a new channel from scratch. Uh, the thought had crossed my mind of just changing my channel name and then doing that. But then I thought I'd be robbing all the people that were there for sure. off-roading stuff. So I was like, you know what? I learned a lot in my first channel and now I know what not to do. <laughs> so let's start a brand new channel and let's approach it a little bit differently um, going forward. So that's pretty much how Full Throttle Hog came to existence. Nice. So that's, um, and you ride a road glide, correct? Yes. It's a 2020 road glide special. Nice. Yeah, I, love, I love the, um, I love the trailer for your video where you've got the map box and you've got the whole camera rigged out. You're like, you came to play. Like, there's there's yeah, no doubt about what that. your channel is going to be about. I, I think that that's, that. that's really cool. Yeah, um, thank you. It was fun. So you mentioned Premiere Pro. So is that still your go-to? Yes, hundred percent. So, and and nothing against the other programs. It's just that something I've been using for twenty years, and uh, you know, it. I'm familiar with it. I only know even after twenty years, and you know, still being a student, I'm only using maybe forty percent of what that program is really capable of doing. Because it's a, yeah. uh, and there's a lot of great programs out there, but that's just what I use. Yeah, I, re I remember the first time I opened it up being like, what in the hell did I just get myself <laughs> into, you know? 100%. Where's the auto button? There's no iMovie auto button. Right, exactly. You know, yeah, because like, you would use those other programs, cow. click and drag down and, yep. Yeah, you know, it it it, it adds a, a level of complexity, but then it also adds a, a level of return that's higher. So it's a it's a trade-off. Yep. So what's your um, what's your filming gear? I want to nerd out because I know this oh. is going to be a big list. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I I love talking about it all the time. So uh, as far as my cinematic B-roll stuff, um, I'm a Nikon shooter. I know that, uh, you know, everybody kind of jumps to the to the Canon thing and the Sony thing mm -hmm. immediately. But I've been shooting still photography on on Nikon for so long. It's just what I was I was familiar with. And we all know Nikon was behind yeah. big time when it came to the video stuff up until they released their Z series or Z series cameras. So uh, I had the Nikon Z6 Mark one and the Nikon Z6 Mark two nice. uh, are both my, my go-to B roll cinematic stuff uh, where I can shoot, you know, the, the Mark two allows you to, to shoot in um, 60 frames at 4k, uh, which is really nice to be able to bring that quality. And, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, they've, they've made leaps and bounds and I absolutely love their platform. I love the way it feels in my hand. And as you know, as a, you know, cameras kind of can choose you, you can go into a store. Mm -hmm. Technically you should probably do a blindfold and have them hand you cameras and see which one feels right. Because in this day and age, the technology is there across the board. Yeah. So, um, so that's what I have as far as the, uh, the cinematic type of shots, um, on the bike I use, uh, GoPro Hero 4 Silver still. I can tell you that thing is still a work workhorse for me. Um, a GoPro 8 and a GoPro 9. So that's nice. what I have when I'm riding on the bike. And then for my drone, um, I have uh, uh, a Mavic. Uh, it's going to be the Mavic Air 2 okay. is what I have. And then I also have a Phantom... <laughs> three pro which honestly i haven't taken out the phantom 3 pro it 
since I've gotten the Mavic Air 2 because that that drone is is fantastic. Yeah. So that's my basic setup when I go out on the road. I want to make sure I at least have one of the Nikons, if not both, and make sure those GoPros are all ready to go. And then that that drone and that drone, that Mavic Air 2 being able to, to fit in a bag with three batteries and something like this versus my Phantom 3, which, you know, my first Sturgis trip last year in 2020, I mean, I literally had that thing on the rack in the back of the bike and it was just a, it, it was a pain because you have things stacked on. It's like, oh, let's fly the drone. I'd be like, oh no, 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 no. Cause it would take forever to set up. So uh, yeah, having that set up, that's, that's pretty much what I, what I go to. And then as you know, lenses, you know, we all go lens shopping in the, in the glass is, you know, obviously very, very important. So I use a uh, F 2.8, 24 to 70, primarily on the, the Mark II. Okay. I also have an 85 millimeter prime. And then I have a 14 to 30 on the, on the Z6 Mark one, which I'll use for like vlogging and talking head stuff. Okay. Is that, then that's a, that's an APC sensor on that. I'm not familiar with the new Nikon. So, oh, so it, no, it's mirrorless. They're, they're all, okay. the, Z, the Z series is all a mirrorless camera system. So, um, the, yeah, the, 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 the 14 to 30 is, uh, is an F4. Okay. Uh, because the, the 2.8 for that is like, I don't know, like $2,400. Okay. Um, so I invested that money more on the 2.8 F2.8 for the, uh, 24 to 70. Yeah, because that's the workhorse for sure, and they're 100%. full frame, if I remember correctly. Yep. Full okay. frame. It's been a while since I've dabbled in the Nikon side. Oh, you should check it out. It's awesome. Yeah, the, the, you had, um, and we'll get to this later, but you have a couple of those Sturgis shots that are just like flipping camera porn. And it's, oh, it's, I appreciate it. it. Thank you. I mean that that twenty four to seventy is an amazing. That's an amazing lens, and like you said, it's. You know, it, there's nothing cheap about that piece of glass, but it it gives you the return, I'm sure. Yeah, it, and it just gives you so many different ways to work with it, just with one lens on the camera, where you can get your wide shot, especially being full full frame, um, and you can even flip it over and crop sensor it in if you want to to even get yourself that 1.5, you know, you know, zoom extra, but it just allows you so many different things that very rarely am I taking the 24 to 70 off the camera. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a big reason for it. Yeah. It's funny. Back in the day, the zooms used to be, you know, everybody wanted primes and now you get a zoom and you can do anything with it. Yep. Especially a, a fast zoom for sure. That's, that's really cool. Now do you mint, do you, um, so you're fully vested in uh, mirrorless. Do you use any other cameras for B-roll or anything? Or no, that's. Uh, I mean, between just those cameras that I mentioned, that's that is my that's nice. that's my primary for for this. Um, you know, it's. I'd love to say I use. I, I I would love to say I even held a red camera, which I have not. But something like that would be you know interesting. But that's a lot. I'm afraid to do that because I yeah. feel like then I'm selling a liver and then I. Then my stuff still sucks, but at least I have a red, you know? It's yeah, like, <laughs> you have a $30,000 camera, but yeah. You, yeah, I don't think I would know what to do with a red camera, to be honest with you. I, I think it's interesting that the 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 break point, I thought, was mirrorless because it. I remember when Canon had whatever series it was and um, or Nikon had, and I had, uh, you know, back when I shot Nikon, I had the Nikon 51 too, the manual. And people were like, oh, you should keep this when you're going to do video. I'm like, I'm not going to shoot video on a digital SLR. Who does that? You know, this is back <laughs> years. And I'm like, who shoots video? And you know, now you have a mirrorless camera and you're like, damn, I can do everything with this. Yep. You know, it, it smokes a, a traditional camcorder for most things, you know. 100%. There's still a, a limitation. Yep. So where... One of the unique things that I thought that your channel offers is that you've really become an educator. Like you're really, you're kind of pulling the curtain back and showing how you do things. And I, and I think that that's really commendable. I think there's a lot of negativity in this space where it's like, oh, I can't tell you what I use, you know, because somehow if I tell you, you're going to destroy me or whatever. You know what I mean? It's, it's. It, it really comes down, honestly, for me and you know, my, just my approach to it is providing people the tools that I wish that, that I had in the beginning, right? Because in this platform, and I understand, I fully understand what you just said, 
but in this platform, we should be looking at each other as more colleagues mm -hmm. than competition. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in good, friendly competition, and and it, I think it drives you. I think competition is great, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so even as a kid, you know, competition. If I don't believe everybody should get a trophy, yeah. but I believe that, you know, when you and I were younger, right, and you played any sport, uh, baseball, soccer, if you didn't win first second or third, you didn't get a trophy, but all you did was go back and you tried harder during that off season. You mm -hmm. trained harder, you practiced just so you could, you know, hopefully get to that level. And I think that level of competition is really good. So don't get me wrong. I do believe in competition. However, the approach that I wanted to have is help others that might want to get into this because we mm -hmm. all have a different story. We all have a different background. We all have a diff different experiences. And, and you look at all these great channels out here that some are going all out and some are just talking head, holding a camera and it's all fantastic. But for those that want to get into the space and they're thinking about getting into maybe starting a YouTube channel, if there's anything, I mean, I, I don't know a whole lot, but what I, what I do know, I would love to push on to other people and, and help mm -hmm. them grow. And, and, you know, whether it's settings, um, you know, going over, you know, camera gear or how to shoot certain things or how to maybe capture a little bit more of that, that, that aesthetically pleasing look. If I can help out, I, I definitely love to do it. And, um, you know, I, that's how I kind of formatted or formatted this channel to say, Hey, be more than just a channel, you know, be something that hopefully people will say, Hey, I can, I can maybe find this answer or I'll look at this and, and, you know, Ryan can help me out. That's awesome. I think that's right. So, so that brings up a good point. So you get the you get the biker in the life, the the vlogger of their life. What in your opinion, what's the starting point? Because we all know that it's a rabbit hole, and you can go you can go into a camera shop, and you could you could blow pornographic levels of money, and and not really <laughs> yeah. get a return on it. I mean, in your opinion. What's a good starting point? So someone says to you, I want to start a channel and I don't really know what I want to do, but I want to learn what, what in your opinion sort of is that start? I mean, do you think, there you go. This is, this is by far the best. If anybody, uh, you know, any of your, your, your viewers are watching and they're thinking about it, um, the technology and cell phones is so good, right? That you can take a, uh, camera. Now this is the the 12 Pro. The reason that I would I would say if you could get to like a 12 Pro or higher is because this has the lidar technology in it. Um, and for those that may not understand, is that you know when you're you're shooting in that uh, you know that f 2.8 and you have that bokeh and blurry background and your your uh, subjects in focus, that's aesthetically drawing your audience to what you as a filmmaker are trying to get them to focus on. This has the capability to naturally kind of slightly blur that background and you can really get some fantastic video with just a, a cell phone. If you had a cell phone and a GoPro, you can start a channel. And I would tell people, if you already have a cell phone, focus on your audio. That is the num number one thing when they, if they're going to start a channel, focus on the audio. It's 60% of the visual experience. And that sounds weird, but it is 60% because mm -hmm. you can take a halfway decent, okay video. And if you have crystal clear audio, your, your audience is going to stay engaged longer versus you could legitimately have the best uh, type of film out there. Right. And it, you know, have bad audio, it will destroy that entire film. Mm -hmm. So audio is key. I still try to learn a lot more about audio. It's a big deal to me. And I would tell people focus more on your audio than your video and then naturally progress in it and don't rush. You don't know what you're going to like just yet. You don't know what kind of lens you're going to want just yet. You don't know if you want a wide angle lens. Um, you know, you see all these different YouTubers out there um, that some of them film uh, Casey Neistat well, films everything in a wide angle right? Mm -hmm. In an extremely wide angle. And he does almost everything with that. You can do a lot with a wide angle lens. And so I would say, focus on the audio, use your phone. And for the starting point, 
go out there and film. In the beginning, it's going to feel so awkward, so awkward. And I would tell people, if you want to get good at talk, if you want to be a vlogger, whether you're a motor vlogger or not, but you want to get off your bike and you want to actually vlog about what's going on, your audience is going to know when you feel uncomfortable. So take your phone on a selfie stick and walk through a mall. Don't hit record. Mm -hmm. Just put it on a selfie stick, walk through a mall or a busy, busy area and talk to yourself. Pretend like you're recording because ultimately people are looking at you because they're interested in what you're doing. Maybe they want to check out what your channel is, but we as our human nature side of things, we get all uncomfortable and it's a tough thing to break. I'm guilty of it. I have to go out there and force myself, hey, be, you know, these, even if they're not, those people that are like, oh, look at, look at this person, another, another vlogger. Let's just say that's their mentality. By the time they get 10 steps behind you, they forgot about you already. Yeah. The others that are interested, maybe they'll try to track you down and be like, hey, where can I see, you know, what you're doing? And, uh, you know, just kind of work through those, work through those struggles when you're filming in the beginning and just focus on that audio. So that, and that's, that's a valid point. So where, where's your starting point for audio or where are you now? What is, what is your go-to for audio? So with, with the, the things that I'm doing out in, in the field of capture, any type of talking head, um, you know, I've got multiple different, uh, uh, boom mics on, or you can call them boom mics, but you know, like road mics and things like that mm -hmm. set up on the camera. I'm never using the camera to capture my audio. I always have an external source, um, at least bringing that in. Even on top of that, I use an H1N Zoom uh, recorder that I can run to the, um, you know, a road mic. And that just gives you a little bit better sound if I'm really diving in. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if I'm doing any type of, of voiceover, you know, right now, I mean, USB microphones have come a long way. Um, like this is a, a fee fine USB microphone. It's done well for me so far, but even more so getting more into voiceovers and, and more into that type of thing. I'll probably continue to try to increase my production gear when it comes to the audio in studio, but out in the field, you know, you can make, here's a good example. Uh, even these type of external microphones for your phone, right? So, uh, these things are relatively, this is also by road, but this is relatively something that you can put right in here and you now have much better audio than your phone can capture. And anything I can do to tweak the audio just a little bit, you know, there's technologies come a long way. You don't need to spend an arm and a leg to get good audio. You just need to focus on it. Okay. I, it's amazing to me that that is the the thing that people overlook. Like I have, a, I've got the first series road. Um, gosh, I can't remember what they call the square little ones that you can put the external mic on. Oh, These yeah. things are great. I mean, I've yep. got I've got sermonic, um, ceremonic, um, two channel audio that we use for work, and I I think the road one smokes it, especially with a purple panda. It has a unique sound to it. It has that mm -hmm. very sort of focused. Um, audio and 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 I think that that's a good point because a lot of people. I mean, I know I do. I'm watching your YouTube video, for instance, not throw you under the bus or anybody anybody's video. And I'm you know I'm looking off, but if that audio is there, you're still engaged. There's nothing worse than seeing something. It's like you know, yep. You, and I think too, if you can if you can capture clean audio on a motorcycle, anything's a cakewalk after that. Because it's like the absolute <laughs> worst condition in the world, you know, like you go into, uh, at least in my line of work, you go into a kitchen and you're like, all right, this audio sucks, but well, it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it's, it, at you're least it's a better starting point. wind noise. You yeah. are literally introducing wind noise if you're going to be doing any type of, you know, mode of logging and things like that. So it is, it is a struggle for, I mean, for all of us, I still, I can't tell you how many projects I'm sure you have too, where you've, you've gone out there and filmed and then when you come back and you look at that audio, you almost have to scrap the project or reshoot it because the audio is just that bad. And so it's a struggle. You just got to keep uh, just keep powering through. Now, do you have a dedicated helmet for vlogging versus a uh, I'm just riding helmet? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I have a half shell that that I use from from time to time in the summer months. 
uh, my, my full face helmet, uh, is still my Simpson ghost bandit, which I just kind of have, you know, rigged up. I have the, the Senna 10 C Evo that I still use the audio from any mode of log that I do or sin of log that I do is use the, the audio that I'm speaking in my helmet is all coming from that Senna. I okay. ditch the video. I use the, the audio and then I'm, I, uh, I pair it with the, the GoPro footage. So, uh, I'm not necessarily a dedicated full face helmet, but if I'm, you know, in the summertime months, if I use my half shell, then obviously I'm not going to be doing any kind of, uh, vlogging from the helmet okay. and I'll just make it like maybe a sequence going into wherever I'm going. Interesting. So you, we can open up this rabbit hole. So what are your thoughts on the hero nine versus the, the other heroes? Cause I've noticed that that flat profile and the nine is just a, it's almost like somebody got drunk and just relabeled it. <laughs> it's not the, it's not the seven. I went from a seven to a nine thinking I was going to take this great leap forward. And I feel like I almost took a leap sideways and backwards. Yeah. And I, I, I would agree because I mean, I went from the, the four to the eight, which was a huge jump. And mm -hmm. then I went the eight to the nine. And like I said, I still use the four, the <laughs> biggest thing. I mean, now we're talking about, you know, color grading something that, I knew I wanted to get into. And so starting this channel, I knew that that was going to be a lot of a, a focus. It was going to be a learning curve. I was going to make mistakes and there was probably going to be some people that look like, you know, Oompa Loompas, but you know, bright orange, bright orange. Skin. I use that term all the time. I thought that was great. You came out with that. So, Ugh. you know, but it's a learning process, right? And, you know, just being a student, I, I, in the beginning, I hated color grading and color correction. I hated it, but I had to force myself to continue to do it. Uh, and so with that, the flat profile still gives me a lot to play with. And, you know, I have more room. The sensor is still small on a GoPro, so that that's frustrating. But I have more room to, to get a little bit more creative and, and color match, especially when I'm using multiple cameras like and multiple brands. Like I got a Nikon. I got mm -hmm. a DJI and I got a GoPro that I'm trying to kind of color around the same so it doesn't look like I'm jumping all over the place. With that being said, anybody that's starting out and has a GoPro and you don't want to color grade, just keep everything in a in your standard color profile, mm -hmm. right? Or the you know the Go I would recommend you don't have to do any color grading. If you shoot in a standard the the GoPro color and just turn down your saturation a little bit, you honestly are going to have something that people People are more content is always going to be king, but people are going to be all right. This is still aesthetically pleasing. Uh, nobody's going to look like an oompa loompa. The system's going to do it for you. It takes away the flexibility for you to mix and match with other cameras and and creating uh, that way. But for ninety percent of people out there, they're not interested in in using multiple different cameras. And and so for them, I just say, hey, stick to the color profile. Just turn down that saturation, uh, maybe that contrast a little bit, and you you should be pretty good to go. Okay. I could, I could see that because yeah, the Oompa Loompa looks really funny. I, I, I recently upgraded my television, and the joke was at my house I was like, we need a new TV because I look at my my iMac video and I'm like, this looks really good. And then I look at my TV and I'm like, what the hell is this? This this looks distorted. It looks, <laughs> and then we got the new TV and I was like, all right, well at least it looks like I kind of know what I'm doing, you know? Because you don't you don't have a reference point for that. So. In your Nikon's, are you using a flat profile or are you using, you yes. know, you using yeah. a flat profile? Okay. Yep. Completely flat. I mean, it looks, it almost looks just straight grayscale by the time I get it into, into the computer. Okay. And now is that so, native or is that one you created? Um, a little bit. Of, so native uh, profile. And then I tweak the settings down even more than what they are. Cause it gives you just some adjustability. <laughs> Cause even in a flat profile, they're going to throw a little bit of contrast in there. Um, and you want to have a little bit, of, a little bit of contrast so that, you know, the, the camera doesn't get confused with focal points and things like that. So, um, but, you know, desaturating everything, uh, and just allowing the camera to capture all that information and then bring it back out in post. Now, are you color grading to, are you color grading with a LUT and just doing it the, the, <laughs> Are, are you bringing it up and then putting a LUT over top of it or? 
so very few times have I used a LUT. I'm not very good at them. Um, minus I'm not either. Two. That's why I'm really honestly curious because I feel like I put a LUT on it and it just goes sideways. That, and it, it's, you know, using in Adobe Premiere Pro, you can use these adjustment layers and kind of mess around with that where you can do it over the entire project. I'd love to get better at it because you can make a feel, you know, once you have all your color correction um, and everything kind of matching up, you can throw a LUT over the entire film and everything is going to match up. Um, it is that extra step. For me, I just get to a, uh, a Rec 709 color standard, and then okay. I'll make my adjustments after. That's the only thing I really slap on. Uh, and then depending on the feel of the of the film, I mean, for social media commercials, I typically don't try to get a, unless the customer asks for it, I pretty much try to stay away from that, uh, like a film grain. I always try to make mm -hmm. the blacks a little bit more black and, and a little bit more sharp, uh, just because I'm usually trying to uh, show something that they really are, are interested in for their product or their business, right? So, um, but when I go to my own stuff and creating these videos for this channel, you know, sometimes I'll add in some film grain and try to get creative with it. And that is also gotten me down into some trouble too, right? Because you can save your work, save your work. Each project that you go through before you make an adjustment, make a duplicate because you're welcome. I just saved you a whole lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> saved you from throwing the camera right out the window. Yeah. Save your work. Uh, now, are you using, um, are you using any sort of color targeting? Are you using like an X-Rite or anything like that? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. I haven't had No, really I hate done. you because I still can't figure that. I have the chart. I still have problems with it. I think that's why I haven't messed with it because I probably don't, I wouldn't know what I would be doing. I get myself into trouble and yeah. then I get frustrated, uh, you know, trying to, you know, obviously get films out and, and cinevlogs and, and motovlogs and, you know, events. I'm trying to get faster with my workflow. And I think adding in stuff like that right now, things are working. I still am learning and I'm still trying to introduce new stuff, but I don't want to now get bogged down. Yeah. I, that's the one thing that I found that if you, well, it's with anything, it's with motorcycles, the more complexity you add to it. Now it's, you know, people are like, oh, I use an external recorder and I use this and I use that. And you're just like, oh, dear God, what did I do? You know, it, <laughs> yeah. it's. And I've gotten lazy too, where I'll put it in a cinematic profile off the camera and kind of use that as my, not that I want to degrade my YouTube work in some sense, but I feel like there's a certain return that you may or may not get on every project. So sometimes it's easier to just kind of tweak that versus it is, you know, shooting completely to a flat profile and putting, you know, a lot of time into it. Yep. And 100%. that's tough. So, so that brings us to the question. So you put out a video recently, and it's my understanding everyone's traded in their camera gears. They've quit YouTube. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, I drank a bottle of Jack and thought about my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to say, and I mean this with so much respect, that Sturgis video, I just... I sat there and I looked at it slack jawed because it it you took it somewhere that I was so excited to see it. It's, oh. I mean, that's a masterpiece as, as far as I'm concerned, and and the views speak of it. I mean, now I will fully admit, I had an opportunity to go to Sturgis this year, and I'm I'm not a big crowd person, so I was like, oh, you know, like I don't. Not a big rally person. You know, I like to ride with my wife and I or alone. But that video really spoke to me in the sense that you, that was un, unlike most things that you see on YouTube. So so first off, we'll put the link in the description. You need to watch that. I mean, that, that should be YouTube 101. But how did you... And, and we can nerd the hell out on this because I'd love to hear it. I'm assuming before you went to Sturgis, you had a, a concept for that. Oh, well, let me back up. One, thank you. Thank you for, for saying that. Um, it's such a fun film to make. And the just the sheer outpour of views and comments, people reaching out, um, you know, means the absolute world to me. It has been 
th- that is by far like the, I mean, I can't even explain it. Like I get the chills just thinking about it. Just uh, I, the amount of outpour support for this film in being my first short film documentary was <laughs> it, it's o- overwhelming. I'm humbled. And I just thank you for making those comments, but that it, this, this might come as a, a little bit of a surprise, but so last year in 2020, we made a seven part series of Sturgis, basically the different days, the different rides, mm-hmm. uh, risque nightlife video. And I knew going into Sturgis this year that I'm not going to do another seven part series, right? I'm always going to try to think of something different. Um, I did have the thought process of maybe doing a structured full documentary, Mm -hmm. um, you know, something around the 42, 45 minute mark, uh, but coming up with target subjects and following, you know, along and you, I just really didn't have the the production, the pre-production done to where I could have pulled that off. So going into Sturgis and, and doing the filming, believe it or not, I didn't know that I was going to do the short, the short film, the okay. short documentary. Uh, I knew I wanted to do something. I wasn't sure what it was going to be, but I knew that it, the shots that I wanted to capture and then maybe something would come up. And I, and I threw out a couple uh, videos. I mean, I was editing in Sturgis and getting videos out in Sturgis uh, and I knew I wanted to do something. I just did not know what it wasn't until I want to say it was day five or six that, it, that this started to, to percolate and come into my mind of let's do, let's do a short film. Um, something I always wanted to do. My, my goals for this year, for this channel was to do a full documentary, or at least be in production of a full documentary, but I'm like, Hey, let's start a little smaller. And you know, you know, bringing it up and talking about it right now, I've had people say, well, why, why are you calling it a short film documentary? Well, I didn't, I didn't make up the rules of what short films and, and the, the definition of the documentaries are. It just falls into that category, right? It has to be between two and 25 minutes, right? It's got to be, um, you know, factual about an event or, um, you know, a, a point in history. You know, you can't have scripted actors that are, you know, uh, it's got to be nonfiction. So it fell into all those categories and putting this together uh, really was a lot of frustration. There was a lot of frustration and, uh, and, but it was a lot of fun to finally, you know, come up with it. So it didn't happen right away. I didn't know going in. I just knew that the shots that I wanted to capture and then hopefully something would come up of it. I just didn't know what, and it formatted into uh, the Sturgis doesn't care video. And I, man, I, like I said, I can't, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank everybody enough for the outgoing support for this. Well, you know, and I think that, and, and you see it in your, in your live stream numbers of Sturgis like Sturgis is something people gravitate towards. And I, and I felt that that, that video took me along with that. You know, it was that very, the editing was fast. It kept you engaged, you know, and then you throw in these just ridiculous drone shots of, you know, it's just like, Jesus. Well, thank you. That's, I, I that's really appreciate it. Really cool. Well, you know, and I, and I think that it speaks to, like you said, being a, um, I was going to go somewhere really great with that. You're going to be a student of the craft, right? You, you want to learn and you can see that you put that. So, at some level, though, and I'm curious, do you feel that that took away from your experience or was your experience with going at Sturgis that you, well, I guess it wasn't right till the f- couple days in, that you wanted to really capture that? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I last year the, in 2020, it was a good lesson for me as far as, I mean, I just enjoy, I enjoy filming. I enjoy the creativeness of the, of the edit and you know, my wife being so supportive and, and helping me out, it, uh, you know, for me, it actually, so to answer the question directly, no, it didn't take away. Okay. I enjoy doing it. I mean, sometimes the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, I can't just jump on the bike and leave real quick. I have to get a certain shot, uh, but I enjoy doing it. And I tell people this all the time. I can't draw a stick figure. I can't color within the lines. Uh, I have no artistic ability when it comes with anything that's in my hand. The only creative outlet I have is, has been, you know, video editing. So I really enjoy that process. 
and capturing everybody uh, at moments like that and capturing people, you know, in those types of events that it doesn't really take it. It's fun for me. And I'm just thankful that I have a wife that's supportive of it. And, you know, we did a lot this year. We did a lot where it was just us going out and doing stuff. And we did some group rides and things like that and, and met up with some amazing people. But sometimes I understand that they're on their vacation and I don't want to be that person that's like, hey, that was great. However, um, do it again. <laughs> yeah, I missed that shot. I need you. And they're like, uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. So, you know, and I understand that. But I want to be respectful of people's time. And, and usually I'll let them know ahead of time. Hey, are you guys OK with reshoots? Are you OK with doing this? Or are you OK even being on camera? Right. So you always have to make sure that you cross you cross all those T's, dot all the I's, and it can take away from that experience for others. But for me, I, I just highly enjoy it. Um, even the drone footage is just, that takes a little bit of time to, to set up, get up in the air and make sure, you know, you're in your qualified airspace and you have all that stuff taken care of getting it up in the air and capturing those shots takes time. And you just, for me, it's enjoyable. I always try to edit in my head as I'm shooting. I don't know if you, if you do that as well, but I have, usually I have a tempo. I don't know what song I'm going to use, but I have a tempo in mind and I have a, an idea of the beats that I want to kind of use, or maybe the genre, or, you know, I don't know if, you know, an epic, you know, music sequence here. I always kind of have that in my head and I slowly start putting pieces together in my head. And then when I get back into the editing room, I kind of will, rewatch all those clips and it'll take me back to what I was thinking at that time. It's, that's just kind of how I've done it. And, you know, and it's worked out. It's, I probably should get a little bit more organized and maybe take some more notes, but that's uh, yeah, it's just, it's just enjoyable, man. I love doing it. And that's a good point too. I think that a lot of people want to shoot everything. And then sometimes everything turns into what the absolute hell am I supposed to do with this? Because you can't figure out what you're looking at. Um, you know, because there's just so much content at that point. Yep. That, that, that's an interesting tip. So we had talked about this before the show started, but let, let's talk about, so that video is how long? 10, 15 uh, minutes? It's eight minutes, eight minutes it's and eight minutes. one second. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's put the numbers behind that. Cause I'm really curious. So what do you, what do you think all in production value of that video you spend in that? As far as uh, editing time or, yeah, or editing, time? shooting, I mean, oh boy, because um, I'm sure the edit's got to be what days? Yeah, it was 42 hours uh, was the <laughs> total <laughs> total editing time, um, and I always try to, and it's really good for people that are getting into this. You should always try to be very disciplined at, at clocking your edits. Uh, and that means that if you get up and you walk away because you're going to use the restroom or grab a drink, you hit pause on your timer and then you remember to come back in and do it because that will help you one in your growth. And it just can help you find a way to streamline where you know that if you're going to be doing just another moto vlog or something like that, and you, you can time it out how long it takes you from import of your footage to export of your project, you have now a time frame that really helped me editing those other videos while in Sturgis, I knew exactly how much time I needed okay. to get a vid to get back to the house and get a video up on YouTube. Uh, and that, that paid dividends. So 42 hours of, of editing time, uh, for that film. And then, you know, as far as film, I mean, there wasn't a single moment I can think of where I did not have a camera with me or I was not hitting record. Um, out in Sturgis. So almost the entire time, I mean, you have to think the amount of hours of footage I went through, um, I think for just this project was like two and a half terabytes. Okay. So, two and a half terabytes, 40, how many hours? 48, you said 42, 42 hours. So do your math kids. That's, uh, <laughs> for eight minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, 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 it was one of those that we all want to, we all hope that we create, no matter if you're a channel that just started yesterday or you've been around for the beginning of YouTube since 2005, right? Every video you create, 
we are throwing it up on this platform to hope people will watch it and enjoy it. Right. I don't think anybody creates a video and be like, well, I hope this is the crappiest video that ever came out. So um, having that come out again and seeing the feedback uh, I've even had people, they sent it over to the Sturgis chamber of commerce um, on my behalf. And they're sending me emails being like, here's all the responses I received. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming and I'm so humbled That's that awesome. I can't, I just can't thank everybody enough. I, I really can't. I, I got the chills thinking about it. I literally have the chills thinking about that. The, the pushback from this, but that speaks to your support. commitment to your passion. And I think that that's great. I mean, that's, it's nice to see that YouTube is not just the, you know, you, you've put so much work into that video and I think it speaks to, um, I would argue it, it made me feel and, Forgive me if I'm going overboard here, but it kind of had that feel of the Why We Ride video. If you've ever seen that documentary where it really speaks to the passion of why you're there. I thought it was great. I mean, it was oh, just like, you. you know, I'm sitting here looking at it one like, well, I'm just selling my gear. I'm joking. I'm not. <laughs> then the next thing is like, I'm like, damn it. And I turned down a chance to go to Sturgis. Like, you know, I don't. I thought it was interesting because you gave it a perspective of no matter how and why you're there, Sturgis doesn't care. You know, it's, it's, it's what you make of it. And it's in that, and you speak, it's a really good point. And as a filmmaker and a content creator, one of the hardest things that we can do, but what we should all be striving to do is uh, delivering a feeling, right. And whatever that feeling is that you can, you can portray in you know the uh in the music in in the video value and whether to use a slow motion slow down that clip a little bit to let it sink in a little bit longer or do you just have it play out at, at regular speed or do you um you speed ramp it you know you just you're trying to deliver that feeling and i will tell you that of all the videos i've ever created this was the the first time that i i i honestly to me watching it, I knew that I was delivering that feeling to myself of what I wanted to portray. And I had no idea. We always cross our fingers and hope. I had no idea that it would, uh, it, that that feeling would be delivered to so many different people, uh, exactly what it was, what it was. And, and them commenting back those feelings. I literally reply to every single comment that I possibly, possibly could and let them know, like one, just thank you for watching. And two, hearing that from people that that express the feeling they felt watching this film uh, means the world to me because yeah. that's what I want. I wanted to portray that. And you hit it, you hit the nail on the head. The the name of the title of the, the film is Sturgis Doesn't Care, but it's to basically the hidden meaning behind all of this is that Sturgis cares about everybody and that Sturgis cares about you know, their community and Sturgis cares about uh, uh, just different walks of life and different backgrounds. And, and they, they just, they don't care that where you come from, but they care that you're there is the mm -hmm. whole kind of hidden meaning behind that. And, you know, going, here's a fun fact for you. Like in the beginning of that film, the drone shot, uh, rising from the trees, uh, and you hear, you know, the nature and the, and the birds and the, you know, things like that, you know, you want people to feel like they're almost being levitated up out of the black Hills and getting a different, that different perspective. Uh, that probably, that might've taken the longest part of that entire film. Uh, it's just that opening sequence. Of, how, how much time do you think you have in that shot? Um, the shot, I probably, I filmed uh, the drone just for that shot for about 55 minutes. Um, so I went through three batteries and I just wanted to find, and I did it from different angles and I did it from different ways. Uh, but ironically, the, the, the noises I was hearing out there and what was in, you know, in my mind of those birds, I couldn't capture it with the, um, with the road mic. Right. I obviously drone does not have audio. So I had to add in 
those noises, the, the, the nature noises after the fact. And I remember how it felt in my head. And I remember exactly how it felt, you know, when I was filming. So I had to go and find the nature noises that I wanted to, to have. There's a slight wind breeze in there that you barely can mm-hmm. tell. There's, uh, you know, probably four different layers of nature noises blended together. And that's what took the longest for just a, the opening, the opening shot. So I, I, th- yeah, I, I have so much respect for that because I think that there's, um, and you nailed it on the head. That's a film. That's not a YouTube video. It's not a, a moto vlog. It's, it's a statement. It, it's a, it, it is, is literally a, a resume piece that, that it's there. I and appreciate and, and I, I think that it's so great that you put that effort into it. Cause I don't, I don't think that people understand and, and, we had talked about this before, like everyone thinks, and if I go out, you know, speaking from the Canon universe, right. If I got and buy an R5 and, uh, you know, a, a 20 to 24 to 70 F2, I'll be like, that's it. I'm Ansel Adams, you know, and it's not, people don't understand that, you know, sometimes those moments and, and the time you put in for that little piece, that's just what makes it or breaks it. Yeah. And, and like, you and I were talking about sometimes, I mean, those are the things that it's so subtle. You're the only one that really is going to, it, it's just that subtle. You, you're the only one that's going to really notice, but if it wasn't there, you don't know how it would have been portrayed, right? The same thing as when you're doing your fine tuning and, and color grading, it's those little tiny slight adjustments. You almost don't want to see much of anything change. But that is actually what what helps deliver that. And, you know, it's, you know, we going into the music realm of it, that was also that I also calculate that into some of that time. And I spent a lot of time finding the right tone, the right piece of music for that film that portrayed what I was trying to do. I mean, anybody that's ever done this, they'll they'll tell you, you can search for music forever and that's pretty much what i did i listened i it must have been close to 500 different tracks to uh to pick just a couple songs that's yeah that that's commitment that that is wow yeah, and i didn't listen to tracks all the way through don't get me wrong like i'll listen no, to the it. beat and the, you know and you're like yep that's just not going to work um and then you narrow it down out of that you narrow it down to about 30 and then you listen to them again and <laughs> Um, and believe it or not, there is of that film, there's an entire section I deleted, I removed. Okay. Um, and this is probably one of the best things that I learned from my own self growth. And maybe this will help others is that sometimes no matter how much work you have into it, if it's not flowing and it's not working, stop fighting it, get rid of it, take it out. And I'll tell you right now, I lost sleep over this. I, uh, uh, for a couple nights straight, I lost a lot of sleep over this. I was, um, you know, it just, for some reason it was not coming together. And the second I deleted an entire portion of that film, everything kind of came together because I didn't, I did not film or I did not edit it in that order. Right. I was, I knew how I wanted to end the film and I knew how I wanted to, start the film, but then putting, putting the, the interior portion in there, I had to do that separately in a different segment. So I, it it was just one of those things where taking that entire section out, even though that took me the longest, it wasn't working. And the moment I deleted it, the stress level came down. I got back focused. So if you're ever in that predicament, take it out take it out, let, let it work. It doesn't matter if it's a moto vlog. It doesn't matter if it's a film. It doesn't matter. Sometimes there's things in there that maybe they don't make sense Mm -hmm. or, you know, just don't do it for added time on your video, right? Just do it. If it's not flowing, content is king. And if it's not flowing, don't lose your audience right there. Just take it out. That's what, that's what I did. And it's hard too, because I think sometimes as a creator, you get so caught up in something you know, I've done 
so commercial work for my job and there's you know you get sucked into this shot that you're so proud of and it's maybe going to get two seconds of screen time but you're like but damn i nailed that but like that you know but it's also easy to get sucked into where maybe that's more important to you than it is to the story and it, it, it's really hard that's you you hit you hit the nail on the head right there it's you know, you have to think about your audience and the story that you're trying to portray, and it might mean the world to you, but you have to let that go. But that's what it comes down to, hundred percent. So, of that video, if you had a, if you had a, it's like picking your only child, right? If you had to pick a shot, what's the shot for that video that defines it? What is the shot you're most proud of? Well, and again, I literally just got filled with butterflies and and goosebumps just just thinking about it because it's so. Every single time, and I've watched it a lot going through. As you know, when you edit, you're. You, what are we, you, we? I gotta check this. What are we at? We're at like forty five thousand views or something. I don't let's, know. Let's let's, uh, let's go live here because I'm gonna put this out on Sunday, I think, and that's my not my normal schedule. But well, I've been asleep at the wheel on YouTube for this month, so that's another story. Uh, so let's see where are we at right now. So it is Friday. And at five o'clock Eastern Standard, and that video is at eighty-eight thousand views. Wow, eighty-eight thousand four hundred and seventy views as of five o one Eastern Standard Time. I that I, honestly, I've <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Honestly, it's. Uh, it, it really does mean the world to me in the, the amount of feed, feedback. I can't, I don't even know how I thank everybody enough. It is, um, you know, going through that, the, the film, trying to diagnose the one shot. Um, I'm not sure if I can, because there's a, there's a, I can give you a couple. I, I that's the best I can do for, it. I can give you a couple that really bring it home for me and it's one of the ending drone shots where it's the single single rider uh kind of more towards sunset and the sun is going down and it's kind of coming to the end of the film and it's <coughs> that in itself is delivering that that solo feeling of going through the black hills after i just showed you all the stuff that you do in Sturgis and, and I lump everything together and I lump the, the Black Hills and Sturgis kind of together for that event. And then you see this rider that's that's going and then the ending shot with the uh, the group, you know, the drones following along with this group and then the drone stops and the riders fade in, the, they fade out of frame. And, you know, that's another one of those shots that, you know, when it came together, I mean, that, that one grabbed me and, um, Uh, Let me think of uh, a couple others that, you know, the people, I will tell you, there's something emotionally connected when that I got emotionally connected with in the beginning shot of uh, the, the person that's in the, their, um, what what would you call that? Um, With the helmet and the, um, what is he wearing? Uh, What would you call that? It's like a, He's not a, not a barbarian. He's. Oh, it's a, I know what you mean, but I can't, I can't visualize it. Hold on. Yeah. There's a, you know, just basically where it's basically talking about, you know, you, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, who you are, you know, it, it doesn't matter about your social status or, or what type of character you are or what kind of life you, it, there's an emotional connection with this, with this subject that. Oh, is, he's got the Viking hat on. No, that's what just okay. watch it. And his wife's got the skull no, no, mask. No, it's even before the chase. Well, it's even okay. before that, actually. And it, that's actually not his wife. That's his sister. That's Go brother ahead. and sister. They, that's brother and sister. They've been going to Sturgis for, I think this was their final year in Sturgis. Oh, um, wow. My wife actually has had a conversation with them and it's brother and sister and they've done these, these trips. Um, but yeah, there's a subject that's standing. He's also, I think, in a Viking gear um, and he's just standing there on the street by himself. And it's um, it's pretty much right before the Clydesdale scene. Okay. And the, uh, you know, him just being there, he was having such a good time just being there for so long that, you know, that was kind of a, a, a really cool shot for the film and bringing it together. And 
you know, some of the drone shots just, I don't, I do, you don't realize when you're shooting it in, you know, you can't look at it in camera on a little tiny screen to figure out how that's going to play out. Right. But when I got back into the editing, editing room and I looked at some of these drone shots, um, you know, I was even blown away. I was like, man, that right there, that's going to be used. So, um, so that's hard, but I, I would say those are the, the, the pieces that, that stick out the most to me. I'd ask you, what, is there anyone that's any scene that stuck out to you? I, there's just, and one of the shots I thought was really cool. And I, and I may be wrong in this, but there's like a, I want to say there's a bike washing scene, but it has that real blown out bokeh and it has that really defined sort of short space to it. And there's, there's something about this and I, and I don't, I feel like I should take notes, but the, there's something about that you captured that raw. It felt like I was there. You know what I mean? It didn't. It didn't feel like it was the big channel, you know, channel whatever you uh, video you follow. Um, I, I really like with the mirror list of how you have that. It's really a defined focal point. It, it draws you in and it has that. If you shot that with a GoPro, it wouldn't be the same video. You know, like you can you can tell that you put the technical work into it, and that to me. It, it's one of those things that um, this is going to be such a weird comparison, but stay with me as we go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> okay. So Angie Sandoval was on one of my earlier podcasts. She was born with one hand. She rides a motorcycle. She did a documentary about her life. It was filmed. And in the closing scenes of the video, she pulls out and she makes this aggressive right hand turn. And I was like, that to me was like all I needed to see because that was someone that like had full control over their bike. And there's there's these scenes that, you know, I just think it's done so well, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to give you a non answer because I am, but it. it like you said, it gave me goosebumps. I stopped and I was like, I mean, pardon the expression, but it was like, fuck, like this, this, this is, <laughs> this is it. You know what I mean? Because every, everybody captures things with a GoPro and it's not the same. You well, know? and I will tell you like one of my favorite shots, I can tell you one of some of my favorite shots that were with the GoPro on that film. And some of them might surprise you, but there's a scene towards the end. Uh, shot on a GoPro while we are at, uh, we're at the Buffalo chip. Um, and we were there with, uh, uh, Adam Sandoval, Ashley and Michelle from bandanas from by Michelle and both those girls, we just had a, a such a good laugh and a, and a good time. And that there's a moment there with the American flag is in the background. And I slow it down with both of them in this, and we just got done with a really good laugh and capturing, maybe it was just that American flag and, and I'm, a, I'm a pretty patriotic person and, and just mm -hmm. feeling that, that sensation of this is America. And here we are, you know, just we're out here celebrating because we are America. Something in that scene is one of my favorites. And that was shot with a GoPro. It, it was shot in the moment of i just wanted to capture these moments on film and that was one of the most important shots in the in the film and it being done on a gopro i mean it's not the clearest shot in the world yeah but it has that it's slowed down so you can see that flag in the background and you can see these the, the genuine smiles and laughter from michelle and ashley that uh that really bring it home now are you shooting in 60 and then Importing it at 24, I assume. Um, so I'm still, I'm still importing it at 60 and okay. then choosing, I, I'm working, always working in a 24 uh, frames per second timeline. So, but then getting, giving the, the ability to slow down the shots that I see fit. Uh, Cause there is nothing worse than a shot that you're like, man, I just want to slow this down. But if you shot it in 24, <laughs> you got nothing, that dream, yeah. yeah, that dream is over. So, um, shooting it in 60 was and gopros are terrible at low light situations so it just it just worked for this particular thing i could have gone down to 24 it would have been clear it would have been a little brighter of a shot um 
And I would say if you're sticking by the rules, that would be pretty much what you'd want to put in this film. But because it's a little darker and you have these lights of these motorcycles in the background and the American flag lit up by these lights, and then these two girls just having these ear to ear smiles and laughing together, it just, it brought it home and it works. So just capture the shot. Capture the shot. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I I will make sure that we put a link to that because I I feel like regardless of your skill set, that's what you should aim for. I mean, that, that, I just thought that that was really just what YouTube should be, you know, there's a, and and we could argue that, that, that content is king over gear, but that, that video is just so well done. And I I mean, I think it, I think it deserves all the accolades. I mean, it's, it's so what we're at, uh, we've got to be at a hundred thousand by the end of the weekend. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, there's just not, that's great. Crazy to think about. It's, it's, it's crazy to think about a hundred thousand people have watched, have watched this film. That's, going on three days old is, is, or, you know, by that time it'll be less than, we'll call it less than a week. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I really, I don't, I don't have words. It's blowing, it's blowing me away and I'm looking and I keep an eye, don't, don't get me wrong and don't get it twisted. I keep an eye on my numbers. I look at analytics with everybody, um, you know, just as much as everybody. Uh, this one, I pulled back a little bit because besides like uh, responding to comments and things like that. Um, usually it's, you know, 15 times, 20 times a day, right? This one I check, I've, I've tried to see, okay, it's doing very, very well. And it's not that I'm a superstitious kind of person, but I, I don't want to feel like I don't want to take away from the experience that it's doing so well. So I have slowed down with just this particular one and the analytics of this film, my channel as a whole, I do the rough numbers and I look at my channel as a whole and the, and you know, the view count, I'm like, okay, I can kind of quickly do the math, but I try to stop myself from doing that because again, I don't want to take away or, or feel like, Hey, if you check this next thing, you know, YouTube is going to delete the film or something, you know, I don't know. No, Um, no, I get that. So it's been it's been crazy to see it hitting on hundred thousand views in its first week. And your subscriber base like launched at that point too, right? If I if I'm yes. Yeah. So it was uh the day before Sturgis, uh I was at uh just under twenty one hundred subscribers. <sighs> so it it has done it's done so much for the channel. Um you know, the people reaching out the, I mean, there's, there's going to be so much cool stuff. I feel that's good. That's going to come from this based on the emails I'm responding to right now that, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, people, people emailed this video to the city of Sturgis. Like they, they emailed it on my behalf. And I can't tell you how thankful I am that it meant so much to that person watching it that they didn't just click to another video. Yeah, they legitimately made the decision on their own, and they're emailing me, being like, "Hey, I sent, um, I sent this off to uh, the Sturgis Chamber of Commerce, and the, here's the reply back." And uh, you know, it's it's surreal. It really is, and I'm just so excited to see what happens from here. We got a lot of good things coming up right now for you know the future. Um, heading out to, to stubborn American for the first time. I mean, I've been to K river just this year was my first time at K river, uh, but going out for stubborn American and, and, you know, hanging out with all these people and, and meeting some of the biggest influencers in the motorcycle community, people that I've watched, people that I've looked up to for a long time, people that, you know, I'm just so excited to you know, hopefully be able to pick their brains and, and just hang out with these other creators and the people that are, that go to stubborn American is not just the creators. I mean, just all the people that are there. I mean, I can't tell you how excited I am. It's going to be the longest uh, solo trip on a motorcycle that I've done. So um, there are some other things planned in the, in the works right now that um I don't have all the details just yet, but it's going to be coming out, you know, real, real soon about, um, you know, getting out to stubborn American that I'm excited about. Um, 
you know, to, to think I look back and I was like 42 hours, long time, all the frustrations to edit this video, put it out there and for it to do this well. And the amount of feedback I've gotten from all the people that have watched it, I do it all over in a second. It was worth the, the no sleep. It was worth the, the 42 hours. It was anything that I thought, well, I was frustrated about this film. Those are, those aren't even thoughts besides the fact that it's like, Hey, you worked hard at this. And, uh, but I try to work hard on, on all the different projects and moving forward, I'm still going to be the guy that goes out and just does a regular moto vlog or cine vlog. I'm still going to be, you know, try to capture, you know, goofy moments and, and just have a regular video throw out there. It's just nice that I, I want to continue to do these short films, to be honest with you. I, you know, eventually I would like to work up to doing a full documentary. And I think it's it's good too because I, I you know, not everyone's going to hit with that kind of viewership, but it's nice when you get that video that hits beyond what you're used to because it kind of reminds you. Because let's face it, this this creative space can suck the life out of you. You know, there's days where you're just like, I suck, you know, and then there's days where you put something out and it hits, and you're like, all right, this is this is this is why I do this, you know. Maybe Man, that's one so in, true. Maybe one in a hundred is going to hit this big, but that that moment is the justification for the moments where you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you got to take and you got to take time. And my wife, she she makes sure that she she tells me to stop, take a minute, take a breath, and appreciate and uh, enjoy this moment. And this wave has been going for <laughs> for three days now, yeah. and I'll give it the weekend. It'll be insane. It just, it, to me, it's just, I, I, I could say it over and over again and I get almost emotional thinking about it. Um, because it's into every, the creators that are out there and you and I were talking before the show, uh, you know, just different, this, this motorcycle community is an awesome community, right? It is really just, the, the motorcycle community in general is probably the best community I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. And then you add in the motor and I clump everybody together as a motive vlog community. And hopefully people don't get offended by that. But if you're on a motorcycle and you like to film stuff, you're a motive vlog, you know, you're in the motive vlog community, right? Whether it's on your bike all the time, or if it's, you know, just talking head and then you show motorcycles, whatever you're in the motor mm -hmm. uh, motive vlog community, that community is so cool, so supportive. You're going to have your, your bad apples. Don't get me wrong. And that shouldn't deter anybody. You're going to have your bad apples or maybe some that are maybe don't have the best intentions, um, you know, for you or, or things like that. But I will tell you right now, the good far exceeds the bad. Um, and, you know, if they're looking to get into it, they need to get into it. Uh, join in on, on, you know, live streams. I tell you what, I, I find it so fun to just hang out with people in these side chats and these live streams. And I like doing live streams myself too, but just kind of hanging out with everybody and, and, you know, everybody's like, Hey, what's going on? And you just got a good live stream. Professional monkey's got a live stream going on tonight. I will be on his live stream. Like it's, it's just a fun community to be a part of. And so I shared, you know, this, this wouldn't happen I truly believe this, this wouldn't happen without this community. It wouldn't happen without the support of this community and these motive vloggers that honestly are, they, they pushed out the premiere for me and they, they, they launched it on their own social medias. They don't have to do any of that. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times we talked about it, the competitive nature versus, you know, uh, you know, people being colleagues and this, is a perfect example of, of people come together and, and, and just being a co a good colleague and saying, look, I'm, I support you hundred percent and human aspects. We want to be competitive. Like we talked about, we want to, I love the good friendly competition and we all, but we want everybody to grow. If we all grow, we all win. Right. And when one person does well, we are all doing well. This just brings more attention because I, I hopefully this comes across right, but 
any video that does well or any channel that blows up or uh, any of us that do well, do you really think that one person that maybe didn't look at motorcycles before that clicked on, let's, let's, I'm just gonna use this as an example, her two wheels, right? Let's say you have a, uh, a new person that's gonna, you know, maybe it's a female rider or whatever, they're new moto camping and they click on her two wheels first time. They're not into motorcycles. Maybe they're thinking about buying one. Do you think they just stop at that channel or that video? No, N- no, they go, they go in and they're, they're now open to this whole new world. So when one person does well, we're all going to do well and we should all really, really support each other. Don't let the, uh, the bad apples, the few and far between, you'll be able to identify them mm-hmm. uh, on your own and, and make your own judgment call. You'll know the people that are really hoping you do well. And then you're going to, you'll run into to the few and far between that. They say they hope you do well, but maybe they have some different in, intentions and you just got to let that, yeah. you know, let it, let it be because for the, 99 percent of this community they they really it's it's the best out there i i really think and it's something i wanted to touch on a mental health video but in life in general but more so in the commuter space or the creative space it's about building your village and building your village with people that have that ethic you know what i mean like if, if you do well and i don't doesn't i shouldn't be less happy you know what I mean? Because you're, we're all part of this. We all ride for the same singular reason or reasons, I should say, but we're all part of this community. You yeah. know, I, I know when Sandoval like exploded and then, you know, when he kind of changed directions and people were like, oh, but he bought an Indian. No, man, it, that man has single handedly done so much for the community. Oh, my gosh. You know, yes. He could quit tomorrow and he's covered. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it, it's well weird deserved. things too with him because like my then eight year old wanted to watch his channel because of scooter. He didn't care about the <laughs> motorcycles, but that drew him in. You know what I mean? And then it got him watching other videos. And, you know, it's we're we're all in this together. You know, and, and the the idea of, oh, well, your channel is doing different than mine or whatever. We're all we all ride different bikes. We're all in different demographics of age and community. And know. we all have different backgrounds and a different story to tell and a different. Uh, you know, I still I will tell you right now, I watch a lot. I don't I don't comment on all of them. I probably should. I should get better at that. If I'm going to self-assess, I need to get better at, at uh, you know, the videos that I'm watching. I try to. But I still watch so many uh, moto vloggers in this mm-hmm. community and their videos, and and I get enjoyment out of it. And I love to see them progress. And I see and and I I let them know either privately in a in a DM or publicly on the thing. Like, hey, I can see, I see you, I see you putting in this work and really taking it to the ne- to another level and and taking. Not that people don't take pride in their craft, but I I enjoy it. And everybody's got it. I can click on multiple. There's some that naturally you're going to like more than others. And and maybe it fits a, a flow that you like, but there's still a lot of good stuff out there. Uh, even some of the talking head stuff, what people need to realize is I had a 27 hour drive back from Sturgis, right? We went straight through. We just, the wife and I took turns. I would put, I would treat a lot of the videos like a podcast. Okay. And listen to them. So it was, you know, especially if it's, if it's talking head and, and, you know, I I would literally treat it like a podcast and just kind of listen to them talk and, and just had so much enjoyment in doing it. So, you know, there's so many great channels out there. Just go watch them all. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. It's fun to see the different perspective and and watching people get you know grow because I'm I'm a a small small minnow right and I've had the time of my life this channel and I will continue to to make these videos uh, and to make you know moto vlogs and and more short films and I still will I mean I do it because I create this for hopefully people to to enjoy and view but I love the creative process. And I just hope that everybody that's creating videos, they enjoy that creative process yep. as, uh, as much as I do. Cause, cause then at the end of the day, I just care about that one person, right. That 
And when I say that one person, that one person could be you, but I care about that one person that comes back and is like, man, this is an awesome video. If you get one thumbs up or one like on a video, you theoretically already won. It doesn't matter if you get a negative comment. It doesn't matter. You already already won. There was one person you were engaged with that you you took. We'll take the Sturgis doesn't care video. I took eight minutes of somebody's life, right? Eight minutes doesn't seem like a long time. Still eight minutes. They could have been doing anything else they wanted to. And then to have them come back and comment on it and, you know, all that stuff. Think about that for every single one of, of the videos out there that, that you put out. One person comments, you connected with that one individual that may not even live in this country, mm-hmm. but they enjoyed they enjoyed it. So, I think absolutely. those are the best moments when you get an IM from somebody and like, yo, I saw this video and I, I can think of at least one video that's got less than 100 views that I put out. And it was on a mental health topic, but somebody was able to relate to it and reached out and said, you know what? That took balls. That took a moment. And now it's someone that's a very good friend of mine that, you know, that I've never met in person. But those are the engagements that matter to me. You know, the the thumbs up like, oh, great job. You're like, okay, you know, thanks, mom. (laughs) But (laughs) but the people the people that say to you like, oh, you know, there was this really cool, um, you know, moment in the video. There was something you mentioned or, or what have you. And maybe it's not a cinematic thing. Maybe it's just a trigger you hit and something you said, those are the things that mean the most to me. You know, it's not the, it's not the monetary return. The biggest video I ever put out, I wasn't even monetized. I'll never see money from that video, but the engagement from those users is what meant the world to me because it was like, there's one person that feels the same way I do, you know, or we've connected to. And I tell people that too, work towards 1000 dedicated uh, subscribers and 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 I say dedicated because there are channels out there uh, that have millions of subscribers, um, or at least in the I would say hundreds of thousands of subscribers. But having dedicated, you'll know when you hit a thousand. It should always be everybody's goal. Thousand mm-hmm. dedicated subscribers means that every video that you put out, those one thousand people are going to watch. Yeah. And the way that I break it down is if those 1000 people are dedicated and they watch, then 1000 people are going to engage with you on that video and they're going to say something meaningful. Right. Mm-hmm. And then out of those, you have to think that every, that means that every single time you put out a video, think of yourself walking into an auditorium and speaking to 1000 people every time, just try to put it that into perspective. You have a thousand people that are 100% dedicated to seeing you and putting that in your mindset and as a goal, no matter how big your channel is, that is something to strive for because let's be honest, you get a thousand people watching your every video put out and a thousand comments on every video you put out and a thousand likes on every video you put out. The rest is just going to fall into place. Yep. But you're going to have 1000 people that watch you for you whether you're a character piece or an educational piece or both. Um, and that's the, when I create these videos, I always think one about touching that one person and then two, how, you know, this could be to build towards that 1000 and that's just a mindset. And I, I, people should give it a try. I think it'll work. Well, Ryan, I don't know how any better way that we could close this. That's, that's it. That's it. Church is over. Let's all go out. <laughs> be creators. Um, so just to recap, so we need to, we need to follow you on social media at full throttle hog on what is it? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And, um, I will put a link in your channel. I put a link in the video. If if you learn nothing from this, just, I really think that you need to watch the Sturgis doesn't care video and, and learn, Set that as your bar, no matter how achievable or unachievable that should be, that storytelling at its best. So well, thank you so much. I, and I appreciate you having me on. I, really, I do. really appreciate your time. So guys, thank you so much. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, my channel as well as Ryan's channel is Full Thread of the Hog channel. And uh, stay safe out there. Thanks everybody for watching.